it's an hour and ten minutes before <laughs> it starts. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> it's time to leave for opening night, but there is no limousine and no entourage. Instead, this most uncommon diva sets off on foot to catch a tram. It calms her down, she says, especially in Switzerland, where trams always arrive on time. It's a strange, it's a strange feeling because I'm nervous, but at the same time, I'm very exciting to see what happened tonight. It's a, every time is is different, you know. It's a um, it's a it's a new experience. Good or not good, depend. <laughs> if I broke a leg, it's not good. <laughs> Three hours into the opera, this is what they came for. Cinderella's final aria. The aria is a test for the best of singers. And tonight, as every night, the pressure on Bartoli is to be better than the best. I know that this is a, a really hard question, but I'll try it anyway. Do you think that you could now truthfully be described as a great singer? <laughs> I don't know. Well, great singers. You have to ask to the people on the to the audience last night in well, Zurich. I don't know because it's it's hard to say. Um, Let me tell you. They they tell me that you're a great singer. Mm -hmm. So you believe it? <laughs> I, I confess I do. Do you? Okay. <laughs> Thousands of fans come to see her, millions buy her records. But the excitement surrounding this 28-year-old is sparked not simply by what she is, but also by what she is not. In a world where tantrums and tirades are commonplace, she is not the temperamental diva. You know, sometimes when people have a, a rare and acclaimed talent, it turns them into monsters. You've seen singers like that, haven't you? <laughs> monsters? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, I know. But I think, um, yeah, sometimes the, some people change with the career, with the success, but sometimes the people born with this problem. <laughs> Cecilia Bartoli wasn't born with that problem, and she does everything she can to keep it that way. I don't know whether the word normal is, is the right word, but if you talk about the normal life of a 28-year-old, you know, you might have a boyfriend and half sure. a dozen girlfriends or something. Not possible, or...? I've, well, possible. No, well, not possible. It has to be possible. I it has mean, to be it's possible. It's, yeah. 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 Well, normal life without without food, without boyfriend. What is the, it's not life. I mean, <laughs> although she doesn't spend much time in Rome these days, she makes sure she never leaves home without a slice of it, or at least a slice of her favorite Italian cheese. Well, I remember in Chicago with my Parmigiano, and the custom says you can go in with Parmigiano. I said, what do you mean? I said, no, they have to say here. The Parmigiano has to say. I said, no, no, no. It's important. I'm opera singer. I have to sing. Without Parmigiana, I don't have energy, you know, just like... Um. And they believed you? No. No? She's now a superstar, reputedly earning $50,000 a performance and booked solid for the next two years. From Zurich, she flew to New York to a sold-out Carnegie Hall to open the season on the world's most famous concert stage.
When you go on stage, is there just the music going through your mind or do other things go around in your head? Depends. Yeah. It's very strange. The, the mind is uh, it's very complicated. <laughs> well, sometimes I'm just afraid without the words and every bar I said, oh, I think. Yes. But at the same time, I feel, oh, now I don't remember what happened in the next bar. But at the same time, I think, so it's very... So, so, uh -huh. so you're <laughs> you know? panicking that you might I'm forget panicking. the words. Yeah, but, but I think. Sometimes when you, when you sing, you look like you almost go into a kind of a trance. You close your eyes and you sing with your eyes closed. Yeah. Which looks like... But I, I, I can't realize this. You don't know that no, you're doing no, it? No, no, no. I do it, but it's just something... Natural. Natural, yeah. You also appear to sing as though it's spontaneous, as though what you're doing has come to you right at that moment on stage. Yeah? Mm. This is good. Bartoli came into the world with the perfect musical pedigree, the daughter of two singers. Her father Pietro was a tenor, her mother Silvana a soprano in the chorus of the Rome Opera. Brought up on Verdi and Rossini, her first public performance was nine years ago as a teenage contestant on a flashy Italian talent show called Fantastico. She lost in front of millions of Italian viewers. It wasn't until six years later that she made a name for herself, curiously enough, not in Italy, but abroad. Now her countrymen have claimed her back. Now they call her La Nostra Cecilia, our Cecilia. Yeah, La Nostra Cecilia on the newspaper, you know, I just see a newspaper uh, two, four days ago, just mm. the day after of Carnegie Hall. Yes. And the review says, oh, the wonderful Cecilia, she opened the Carnegie Hall and was a big success. So, la nostra Cecilia, you know, now. Cecilia, our Cecilia, okay. after all of this. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I wonder, I mean, I wonder why it took so long and, and why you had to leave this country to become as well known as you now are. Mm. Why do you think? Why? Because this is the, the, the story. I mean, I'm, I'm not the first and not the last, you know, the first. Mm. Maybe 100 uh, years ago, Caruso <laughs> was the same for Caruso, was True. quite the same for Pavarotti. Mm. So why I have to be different from me? <laughs> <laughs> That voice, that incredible voice, was lovingly coaxed into the world by her only teacher, her mother. She knows my voice better than, than me, absolutely. If I have some problem or some strange, you know, I said, oh, mama, why this doesn't, I mean, I have a problem here, but I can't resolve alone, you know. She really knows the, my voice better than me. And, and my vocal cord is here, you know, it's not in the, her body, so. Possiamo parlare un po' di, di, di questo sistema di aprire la gola? Sì. Questo qui, se noi... Drawing on her own experience, Silvana Bartoli taught her daughter how to free up the throat and allow her voice to literally leap out unhindered. Uno sbadino normale fa... It is an extraordinary bond, a wholly professional and at the same time wholly personal relationship that sustains them both. 
There's, there's a very deep relationship. There's a great relationship of love, mother and daughter, but friends, friends. And we have a great deal of respect one for the other. What's the toughest thing your mother has ever said to you after a performance? Oh, mamma mia, non so. <laughs> well, um, when she says, buono, is this a me? I mean, this is okay, you know, it's not bad, it's not good, this is terrible. It's like a thing, it's a, something of uh, indifferenza, you know. Indifference, <laughs> yes. Is, That's I mean, the worst thing that can happen to you. <laughs> And it's difficult to, to <laughs> accept. <laughs> to accept that it was just so, so it yeah. was okay. <laughs> we were in Zurich when Silvana flew in from Rome to pay Cecilia a surprise visit on opening night. Their happiness was all the greater because Silvana had just recovered from a serious illness. <laughs> that gave Cecilia the chance for a surprise of her own. She turned a recital into a celebration of her mother's life. Silvana Bartoli was able to join her daughter on stage for a musical first. that one day I could have sung with my daughter. It was the most wonderful thing that could happen. It was the most wonderful thing that could happen. I'm reliving that moment. This was important, important thing for her. Is you know the continua. I mean, to that life goes on. Yeah. She said to me, I think her words were, "I never believed that I could stand on the stage and sing like this with my daughter." Wow. So it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Oh! 